I'm Jason Stipp from Morningstar. The government employment report for June was released Friday. It showed 223,000 jobs were added last month. Unemployment rate fell to 5.3 percent, but not everything in the report was particularly good news. Here to offer his take is Morningstar's Bob Johnson, our director of economic analysis. Bob, thanks for joining me. Great to be here today. The headlines today seem to say that this was a soft report. Would you concur with that? Yeah, I, I think it was not one of the, the stronger reports we've seen. I mean, we obviously saw uh, some months uh, recently, as much as 280,000 jobs as originally reported. And then, of course, back last November, we saw a number that got pretty close to 400,000. So the 223 is clearly at the low end of what we've been seeing recently. And we did have some prior months were revised down. Um, yeah. So it seems to indicate that either something was overreported or we're paying back for jobs that were pulled forward earlier. Yeah. I think we did pull back some of those reports, and the 280 that was originally reported it certainly got pulled back, and we certainly did lose some jobs. And that's kind of been the trend lately, and which is not good, because usually uh, when the mar job market's strong, it's kind of like they keep adding more jobs to the reports as we get revisions. And usually if you see the revisions are down for the prior months, that's, that's not good for the longer-term trend. It's one of the kind of secret things that I look at that's not particularly good for the job market. And productivity had gone down um, last year. Yeah. So it seemed like they were hiring a lot of people and the economy was picking up in the second half of last year. Are we seeing some payback potentially for overhiring at that point? You know, absolutely. We keep on talking about last November and then we, we actually saw some of it go into December and January where so many jobs were uh, were added. It was we suddenly got the second month of five percent GDP growth and everybody's going, oh, this wasn't just the weather and they, they went out and did it on a hiring binge. A, for 2014 to, to make up for, you know, we're holding back thinking, well, are we going to make our numbers or not? And then the budget cycle hit at that very same time to revise the GDP. So there was a big hiring uh, backlog for January. And so there was a ton of hiring when we hit the new year as well. And now we're having a bit of a payback. You're absolutely right. Uh, you know, when we add $400,000 uh, jobs in one month, as we did in November, uh, something had to give somewhere. And, and certainly we've seen uh, job growth for the first six months of 2015 at kind of roughly the 200, 210,000 level. And uh, usually we've been averaging about 250,000. So clearly uh, the first half of this year has been soft for hiring. And when you look at June, you said roughly a third of the sectors, the employment sectors, didn't add any jobs. Yeah. You know, mathematically makes it hard to start adding jobs when you've got so much not adding anything. And and some of them are as we anticipated. You know, we've been talking so long and so hard about the manufacturing sector, and it really didn't add any, any workers at all. And so that's clearly been holding things back. Uh, the mining sector, which was a big boon to the numbers earlier, uh, say in 2012 and 13, uh, now it started to go in reverse, and we were losing as much as 20, 30,000 jobs a month. Uh, thank goodness, in the month of June, we didn't lose quite as many energy jobs, but we still lost jobs. So you put together no no growth in uh, manufacturing, no growth in mining, and then the government sector remains in the doldrums, and and we didn't add any jobs there. And so you add them all together, and you're somewhere between a quarter and a third of the potential job market didn't add any jobs at all. And the unemployment rate down from 5.5 to 5.3 percent, but that's not being painted as good news this time around. No, uh, uh, it, clearly it, it came because people left the workforce, and so it was not a, a good number. The participation rate went down as people stopped looking for work. So if you didn't have any people looking for work, and uh, it clearly brought the unemployment rate uh, down. So why would that be, though? Because if the job market had seemingly been really strong, why yeah. are people dropping out now? You know, the, the now is a big is always a good question, and I think we've had two or three months where the participation rate went up. And you know, we're on a long-term secular decline in that participation rate as the baby boomers uh, hit retirement age and retire. You know, you never drop out of the workforce, according to the statisticians. So even if you're age 90, you're counted as a non-participant in the in the labor number. So it's kind of an artificial number. And, and so that should pull the number down over time. And we had two or three months where the participation rate really went up and probably looked a little unnatural to me. And now we're going the other way. And we had some months where we had really good employment growth. We added a lot, bunch of people, but the unemployment rate actually went up. I remember one month where we went from 5.4 to 5.5. Five. This month we went down uh, in, a, in a month where the employment growth was uh, uh, pretty dismal. So again, a little bit of payback from participation rate going up in prior months, maybe 
higher than it should have when you're looking back on exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, let's talk about wages. Wages didn't look great in this report. No, and you know, I'm, I'm getting a, a little bit concerned about the, the statistical nature of some of that number. There's too many things in here in moving parts that make this a hard to analyze number. Uh, you know, if you have more retail jobs than manufacturing jobs, that can make the number go down in terms of an average wage just by what I call mix. Mm -hmm. And so that's certainly been uh, something hard to analyze uh, the numbers. And we certainly, again, we've had uh, two or three months of very good numbers as Walmart, Targets, and so forth. Minimum wages went through the numbers, and now those are kind of through. And uh, now what's showing through is some of the, like the mining sector has actually got down wages. Uh, you know, we mentioned the employment numbers were bad. Well, along with that's going the wages. And, and so that certainly impacted the numbers as well. And it's very interesting, the manufacturing sector, uh, even if you look year over year, where we had about 2% uh, average uh, hourly wage growth, manufacturing is more like 1%. Mining's actually down. Uh, but you've got a lot of sectors that are doing really quite well. And I will admit to, to being a bit confused, but some of the the poor paying jobs are actually the ones with the best growth right now. Restaurants year over year are up 2.7% in terms of, of wage growth. Construction, we've talked about shortages for some time, we're up 2.5%. Even retail, which is notorious for not being a great payer, up 2.5% year over year. So it's not entirely the bleak picture on wages that people are 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 painting. It's it's certainly good if you're in certain sectors uh, where maybe you were being underpaid and there's being a, a little bit of a convergence in the wages that's really showing up in the numbers more than everybody's doing terrible. Okay. And lastly, if we look at the rest of the year and the job growth that you expect to see, you think we might actually have added fewer jobs this year when we get to the end of the year than we did last year? Yep. I think the, the uh, GDP growth rate in two years will tend to be relatively similar, and so my base at about 2.4%, and so my best guess would always be that the employment should grow about the same amount, uh, and that's about 3 million jobs uh, in 2014, and I'd expect relatively similar number for 2015 would be the normal pattern. Uh, but so far this year, because we started off with this slow growth and we had that big run early, or late in 2014, it's going to confuse the numbers a little bit. And I think that uh, uh, to get to as many jobs added for the full year, all 12 months, uh, in the back half of the year, we're going to have to do 280, 290,000 jobs per month on average. That means, you know, we could have a couple of 320s and a couple of, of, of 250s or whatever, but it means we have to average 280 to 290. I actually don't think that's going to happen. And I think that may surprise some people. And I think that uh, uh, we'll probably average out at more like... Uh, uh, a little under 3 million this year instead of over 3 million jobs added. So it could be tough to get there. Bob, great insights on the employment market. As always, thanks for joining me. Thank you. For Morningstar, I'm Jason Stipp. Thanks for watching.